homosexuals are out of the closet. So let's, let's sort of um, uh, hear some challenges that we have and things that we can do about some of the things, particularly when it comes to same-sex marriages. All right? And I'm going to church um, uh, Pastor Miles by Christmas. I assume all y'all have seen passage from the meeting upstairs? Okay, great, 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 great. Let me pray for us and we're going to pray for the technology because we've got to show you a slideshow and right now the slides on slide. So we want to pray that that will happen. Lord, thank you so much for being a good God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here and filling this place 24-7. Thank you for all the faithful people here this morning. And Lord, we uh, thank you that you have enlisted us into the battle. Oh, yeah. We didn't become Christians just to be comfortable and be blessed. We want to serve you and fight the spiritual battle uh, on this earth that you uh, uh, commissioned us to fight. I pray that you open our eyes and our hearts to the seriousness of the battle facing us today. Lord, I pray that you inspire us to move and to act. And we pray that all the churches represented here will be on fire for this important battle. Thank you so much for your word that makes everything clear. Our marching order is crystal clear. And so I pray you make it crystal clear. Show us this issue from a whole new perspective. Show it to us from your perspective. May we see it how you see it. May we feel about it how you feel about it. And may we act the way you want us to act. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you have a Bible, you can turn to... um, Genesis 19. As Pastor said, I'm, uh, I'm the pastor of the Rock Church. Uh, we're located in Point Loma. And we started our church in 2000. And in just August, we moved to our new facility okay. right on Rosecrans. And right after our first sermon series, the fire started. And y'all remember the October fire? That Sunday morning was the last Sunday of our first series. I think it was like 10 weeks or something. And we decided to open our facility as an um, evacuation center on Tuesday morning. And so we sent a text message out to all our people. And within 40 minutes, we had cars lined up in front of the building, all the way around the building for 13 hours up until 11 o'clock that night. And we had collected um, you know, 1,300 cases of water, rooms full of toiletries, rooms full of children's clothes, rooms full of adult clothes. We, we, when we told the staff, we didn't have one bottle of water, we had nothing. So we just said, we're gonna do this by faith. Amen. And so we, we sent text messages out, we had all these people, we had dancers, we had petting zoo, we had people cooking soul food, Chinese food, Italian food. And we had 2,000 people there, because all the kids in the church were off. So we had people crawling all over the church they had a volunteer, and there were only 12 evacuees. So each evacuee had like 500 people to themselves. And they, and they were surrounded by people saying, hey, you know, drink this water, lay in this guy, eat this food, because there was nobody there to help. So what we decided to do was to send some of the supplies we had out to all around San Diego. So we started sending it to Ramona, to Petraeo, to, to Qualcomm, and, and when we sent the food and clothes and water by truckload, we made a flyer, and the flyer said, if you want first class accommodations, Come stay in our building because the big building was brand new and some people were standing out. We, you come stay in our building, we got air conditioning, we got a 150 to 1 uh, volunteer to evacuate ratio. So you'll have your own crew take care of just you. You can have your own bathroom, we'll do your room service, we'll take care of your kids, you go to the movie, whatever you want to do. We just wanted to help somebody. So my question to you is today, and here's the challenge, is that how far are you willing to go to help people who are running from fire? Now, the fire I'm going to talk about today is Hell's Fire. But there's something different about this hellfire. Uh-huh. This hellfire is going to kill up Christians. Yeah. 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 This hellfire is going to kill up righteous people. And the story I want to share with you today is a story about God sending down fire and brimstone uh-huh. on Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh-huh. And if the righteous don't leave, they're going to die. Yeah. And the situation I'm going to talk to you about today with the gay marriage is that kind of a situation. Because God, he judges sin differently. Not all sin is the same. It's different than if I kill somebody than if I go steal a Snickers bar. It's different. We all know that. Sexual sin has extra penalty. We'll talk about that in a minute. But in this story, the angels come down. They talk to Abraham. And they tell Abraham, you know, you're going to have a baby. His wife laughs. You don't know the whole story. Two angels go down and walk to Sodom and Gomorrah. And God says to Abraham in verse uh, 17 of chapter 18. 
verse 17 of chapter 18 of Genesis. It says, the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Uh, let me see what I'm about to do. Seeing Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Verse 19. For I have chosen him that he may command his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice, so the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has promised. Verse 20. The Lord said, Because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and their sin is grave. Everyone say outcry. outcry. Say grave sin. Grave. He says, I will go down and see whether what they have done all together is, is true. And if so, I will know. So God says, I'm going to go and see what's happened. Now, we all know that this city was rampant with homosexuality. Yes. So we all know that everybody was wicked except there were just a few. Who was crying out to God? Now, and that's not really the point of my message here today, but I'm going to take a guess that some of the little kids who were perverted were crying out to God. Yeah. Saying, you know, I'm doing this, but something ain't right. Why? Because it's not right. It's, it's sinful. And, and whether you do it because you want to in your heart, your heart is going to know. But, but here's the point of the sermon. The point of the sermon is chapter 19, verse 12. It says, The men said to Lot, Have you anyone else here? Sons-in-laws, daughters, sons, or anyone else in the city, bring it out. For we are about to destroy this place because the outcry against its people has become great before the Lord. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and said to his sons-in-laws, who were to marry his daughters, up, get up out of this place, for the Lord is about to destroy the city. And this is the verse that I think a whole lot of pastors and Christians represents them. Look what it says next. He seemed to his sons-in-laws to be joking. Now the reason I say that is because this whole gay marriage and gay rights thing, there are a lot of pastors who are going, ah, it's not that big a deal. You're going to sign it. We're trying to get 1.1 million signatures on petitions so we can amend the state constitution. Amen. So marriage is forever between a man and a woman. Amen. And we talk to pastors and go, eh, it's not that big a deal. This is no joke. This is no joke. I'm going to tell you, tell you a minute why. But let me get one more verse. I'm going to tell you, tell you why. And look what it says. This is the verse. Verse 15. As morning dawned, the angel urged by saying, Up, take your wife and your two daughters up out of here, lest you be swept away in the punishment of the city. What the angel said is that what God is about to do will even kill you. Yeah. What God is about to do will even kill you. We're going to explain a situation to you with the uh, gay marriage that will affect us eventually. It will affect us. And God will come to us and say, why are you doing anything? Now I'm going to tell you that we have a Sodom and Gomorrah brewing in the United States of America. And as you don't know about SB 777. Well, SB 777 is a bill that went into effect January 1, 2008, just about 90 days ago, 80 days ago. Basically says this, that in the public school it is against the law to say that parents are mother and father. It's against the law. If you are a teacher in public school, you can no longer say parents are mother and father. You can no longer say anything against the alternative lifestyle. Homosexuality, transvestite, transgender, and you can't say anything against, you can't say the facts that if a 20 year old guy is gay, he will die 20 to 30 years sooner than he will if he's heterosexual. It takes 20 years off your life. They won't tell you that. And if you're a gay man, you have a thousand times more likely chance of getting HIV. That 70% of the people with HIV are gay, only 2.8% of men are gay, 1.5% of women. Why are they so powerful? Because they vote. Yes. And we don't. Christians don't. That's why. That's why they're taking over. And so, so they're not, you can't say that in a public school. Even though the CDC, the Center for Disease, Disease Control of the government, knows these facts, but they won't tell the kids. Someone needs to sue the, schools, sue the school district for telling those kids it's safe. That's what's happening. So when your kids go to school, Whatever school they go to, I want you to envision this, that there's two demons standing at the front door of school. When they come to school, they close the door and say, thank you very much. We will have your kids for eight hours. We'll give them back to you. And guess what? You cannot go to school and say, think about it. There was a man in Massachusetts, they were teaching his daughter, or his child, I think it was in kindergarten. There's a book called King and King. And the book is about a little king. It's a children's book. A little king looking for a queen. They bring him all the queens, all the princesses, all the honeys. They bring him in. He goes, oh, she's cute, she's cute. But I want to see her brother. And he marries the brother. And he kisses the brother. It's a children's book. And so the father comes in and says, I don't want my child seeing that. And when you do that, why don't you tell me so I can take my child out. And the, and the school said to him, you don't understand, sir. When your kid is in the school, they belong to the state. This also happened in Palmdale, California. When your kids come to the school, they belong to the state, and we will teach them whatever we want. There's nothing you can do about it. He says, I'm not leaving. They arrested him. That's what I'm talking about.